Hey guys, it's Miss Renee here. I hope you had so much fun finding all of the Easter eggs around the church. Did you? Yay! I love Easter egg hunts. All right, well, this is a backwards Easter egg hunt, right? So all of your eggs are empty now. So our job is to help you fill it. So what I want you to do is a couple of things. First off, after I get done here, I want you to pause the video. Then I want you and your family to go find a space anywhere you want on the church grounds. You can stay in the sanctuary. You can go to the fellowship hall. If it's a pretty day, you are welcome to find a great spot outside. And what you're gonna do is take your activity bag and all of the eggs that you found, and we are gonna listen to some of my really good friends tell you the story of Easter. And as we tell the story, we're gonna fill up those eggs that you found, all right? So I'm gonna let Miss Abby take it away first once you get settled, and I hope you guys have a great time filling those eggs, and I'll see you back again at the end, okay? Have fun, bye! Hey everyone, welcome to our backwards Easter egg hunt. This is going to be so much fun. I hope you guys are ready. Do you remember the Christmas story when Jesus was born? That is really when the Easter story begins. In a stable in Bethlehem, a child was born and that little baby was very special. He was God as man and his name was Jesus. When Jesus grew up, he taught people about God, about how much God loved them and about how they should love each other. But not everyone agreed with what Jesus was teaching, and many wanted him gone. Before Jesus went into the city of Jerusalem to celebrate the Jewish Passover, he stopped to spend time with some of his friends. While he was there, Mary took a very, very expensive jar of perfume worth a year's wages and washed Jesus' feet with it. Her generous act was a way of preparing Jesus' body for what was to come. There's a small container in your activity bag. Open it up and smell it. And imagine how much Mary loved Jesus. The next day, the great crowd that had come for Passover heard that Jesus was on his way to Jerusalem. They took palm branches, like these, and went out to meet him shouting, Hosanna, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the King of Israel. Can you do that with me? Take a palm branch and wave it around and let's shout Hosanna together. Ready? One, two, three. Hosanna, Hosanna. Jesus began his last week on earth by riding into Jerusalem on a donkey under a spread of palm branches with crowds hailing him as their king. They didn't understand that he wouldn't be a leader like a king or a president, but a spiritual savior and king who would rule forever. When it became obvious that Jesus wasn't going to fulfill their hopes, many people turned against him. You're going to hear more about that in just a little bit. To help you remember this part of the story, I want you to find your green egg. Got it? Now look in your activity bag and find the itty bitty donkey and put it inside of your green egg. Thank you for helping me tell this part of our Holy Week story and for being such great listeners. Now, Pastor Brian is going to tell you about what happened later in that special week. Bye, guys. Hey, everyone. Are you ready for the next part of our story? Well, later on during that special week, Jesus sent two of his disciples, those are his closest friends, Peter and John, to get ready for the Passover meal. Now, Passover is a very special holiday for the Jewish people. It's the time that they remember when God set them free, when God helped them escape Egypt. During the meal, he, Jesus took bread. He gave thanks, he blessed it, and he broke it. And he said, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. He did the same thing with a cup of wine. He wanted his disciples to know that his sacrifice was for the forgiveness of their sins. Communion is the way that we remember this special meal. We celebrate communion to remember that Jesus loves us, and that no matter what we do, or no matter how much we mess up, Jesus forgives us.
And so now we're going to celebrate communion together as we remember this meal that Jesus had with his disciples. So go ahead and find the pink egg. And when you find the pink egg, take the cracker out of your activity bag and place it in the pink egg. Now, here's what I want you to do. I want you to imagine for just a moment that Jesus is handing you the cracker. That Jesus is saying, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Imagine Jesus looking kindly at you as he gives you the cracker. Now I want you to look in your activity bag and grab the little cups of grape juice and the little wafers. And I want you to hand them to each member of your family. And as you do that, I want you to say, this is the body and blood of Jesus Christ, which is given for you for the forgiveness of sins. That's awesome. I want to tell you one more part of the story. Now, remember that not everybody liked Jesus. Not everybody liked what, his, what he was teaching. In fact, some people really had a hard time with what Jesus said and what Jesus did and the, the new things that he was teaching. Would you believe it? that one of the 12 disciples would actually betray Jesus. Do you remember who that was? That's right. Judas Iscariot would turn Jesus in to the chief priests. Now, he had arranged with the chief priests to wait for just the right time to turn him in. Well, this night that he shared the special meal with his disciples was the very same night that Judas would betray Jesus. I want you to look in your activity bag and see if you can find some coins. Did you find them? How much is it? Judas turned Jesus in for money. In a very real way, Judas chose money over Jesus. And Jesus knew that Judas was going to do this. He let him do it. He let him do it because he wanted to show the world how much he loves his disciples all the people of the world, and even loves you. His sacrifice is a reminder of how much Jesus loves us and how much Jesus forgives us. I want you to remember that God loves you and that no matter what, God forgives you. Thank you for listening. And now I'm going to send you to Miss Grayson as she continues our story. Hello, everybody. This is Grayson. Oh, Jesus must have been so sad when Judas betrayed him. But as Pastor Brian says, he knew what was going to happen to him. And that didn't stop him because he wanted to save everyone he loved. And that means all of us, too. So what happened next? Well, after Judas gave Jesus away to the soldiers, he was arrested and treated very poorly and was sentenced to die on the cross. Oh no. The soldiers led Jesus away and twisted a crown full of thorns and placed it on top of his head. That must have hurt. They teased him and said, Hail, the King of the Jews, because back at that time, they didn't really believe that Jesus was really the Son of God. Oh, Jesus was so weak from being mistreated by the soldiers. But the soldiers made him carry his own cross up, up a hill. Oh, do you think that cross was very hard to carry up a hill? I think so too. 
A sign above his head read, The King of the Jews. Many people who passed by said some very mean things to him and made fun of him. Some of Jesus' friends and closest family members were very sad and they were crying and they were very scared and they tried to comfort each other. How oh, they loved Jesus and they were sad and scared to see what was going to happen to him. Now, I want you to look inside your basket for a purple egg, like this, from your egg hunt. And look into your activity bag to find a little purple cross, like this. And put it inside your egg to remember the sacrifice that Jesus made for all of us, even me and for you. Fortunately for us, this isn't the end of the story. I personally love happy endings, don't you? Now, I'm going to let Mr. Adam take it, uh, take it away from here and tell us what happened next. Thank you for listening. I'll see y'all later. Bye. Hello, everyone. It's Mr. Adam. Thank you so much for coming to hear this special story with us today. Can you imagine what it was like to be one of Jesus' friends after he had died? He was their leader. They certainly must have felt lost without him. They were sad that he was gone. And they were probably concerned about their own safety as well. Two of Jesus' best friends, Joseph and Nicodemus, received permission to bury Jesus after he died. The two of them wrapped him with spices and strips of cloth. Which was, com which was traditional in Jewish burial ceremonies. Well, moving on, there was a garden near where Jesus had died. And there was a tomb in that garden that had never been used before. Jesus' friends decided to bury him in that tomb. And they rolled a very large stone in front of the entrance to keep, to keep Jesus' body safe. It was Friday evening. The sun was starting to set. Jewish custom said from, from Friday night when the sun set until Saturday night when the sun set was the Sabbath. And it was their time to go in honor that time. Well, really early on Sunday morning, like really early, like, I know it's tough sometimes to get up and get to church early sometimes on Sunday mornings, but, but really early, right when the sun came up on Sunday, several of the ladies and they had traveled with Jesus to Jerusalem went to the tomb with more spices and more perfumes to honor Jesus and to show their love for him. When they got there, do you know what? They were shocked. The stone, it had been moved and the entrance was wide open to the tomb. It's now time to fill your blue egg. Look in your activity bags. Look for a small rock. Looks like this. Go ahead and put that in your hand and imagine that rock being the size of a car. I mean, maybe even a minivan. That's a big rock, isn't it? It's got to weigh a bunch. So spend a second and tell your family how many people you think would take to move that rock and open it, open the tomb. Now go ahead. You put your rock inside your blue egg to remember the stone that rolled away. Well, that's it for my part of the story. I Honestly, I can't wait to hear what, what happens next. Thank you so much for helping me tell my part of the story. Let me look around here and see if I can find her. Miss Abby, Miss Abby. Miss Abby, can you come and tell, can you come and tell these folks the next part of the story? Thanks, Mr. Adam. Hi, guys. Uh, my name is Abby Daughtry. Uh, you may have seen me um, in our 9 o'clock service on stage uh, playing my guitar and leading you guys in some songs. I'm so excited to share this final part of this most special story with you today. So Mr. Adam just told us that the big giant rock in front of Jesus' tomb had been moved. Can you imagine how surprised the women must have been? Show your family your best surprise face. <gasps> I bet that's pretty close to what their faces looked like too. So the women ran and told Jesus' disciples. Now the disciples, 
they came running and looked inside the tomb and it was empty. Jesus wasn't there. Now one of the women, after everyone had left, one of the women, Mary, she stood outside of the tomb crying because she thought that someone had taken Jesus's body. But when she went to look inside the tomb, there were two angels who asked her, why are you crying? Do you guys remember why Mary was crying? Good! She thought that someone had taken Jesus' body. Now, Mary turned to leave the tomb, and guess who she saw? Jesus! Jesus was alive! So Mary ran to him, and she worshipped him. Now, guys, I want you to find your yellow egg. Your yellow egg. We're going to leave this egg empty to remind us of the empty tomb. But of course, I do want to give you something. So I want you to look in your activity bag to find a special treat that you can enjoy right now. Let this be a reminder of the sweetest gift of all, our salvation through Jesus. Thank you guys so much for coming out today and helping us tell this story. We hope that you had a good time and that you loved it so much because that this is how much we love you here at Jefferson and Outpost. You guys have a great week. Bye. Thank you, Abby. Oh, our storytellers did so good, didn't they? Two thumbs up to all of them. If you see any of our storytellers, be sure to tell them thank you. I think they did a great job. All right, well, I wanna say thank you to you. Thank you for coming to hear the biggest, the coolest, the most awesome, the most important story in all of history. Yes, that story really was that big and that important. Now, what do you do when you hear an important or really cool story? Yeah, you wanna tell other people, right? You wanna share the same story that someone told you. And that's just what you heard today. You heard what Jesus did, how much he loved you, and all that he did to save his friends, to save me, to save you, to save everybody. He loves everybody. And now he needs our help to make sure everybody knows that. So when you leave here today, I want you to do a couple things. Be kind, be helpful, be loving, be forgiving, be joyful and make sure to tell someone Jesus loves you. All right. That's such a big, important job that he needs us to do. So that there is more and more love in this world. I would love to be able to say a prayer over you and your family before you go. Okay. So will you bow your heads with me? Heavenly Father, thank you for all of the families who were able to be a part of this special day today. And Lord, we thank you for your son, Jesus. Thank you for his love and sacrifice for us and for our new life in Jesus. Be with us and help us to share that good news with everyone we meet. We love you and we praise you. It's in your name we pray. Amen. All right, well, make sure that you go through the fellowship hall on your way out. We have one more surprise for you. I love surprises, don't you? It's a goodie bag. It's a goodie bag with candy. So make sure to go by and get that, okay? Thank you once more for coming today. We hope you have a wonderful Easter, and we hope that you come back and worship with us for Easter Sunday. We'll be right here at Jefferson First United Methodist at 9 a.m. for our modern worship service and 11 a.m. for our traditional service. And we'll have all kinds of fun kid stuff at both of those services, okay? Well, happy Easter. We love you and God loves you. Bye-bye.